Hello, so why did I meditate across America? I was on a US book tour and I thought it would be a fun little exercise. The trip spanned 60 days and covered 25 different cities. We drove everywhere, so that was around 10,000 miles of driving and our main source of fuel was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches of which we ate 300. With that, let's see how the tour played out. I started out listing cities by major universities, anything from Harvard to North Dakota. And once I consolidated a list, I made them into an awesome kiss-like rock star poster in order to promote the tour. I decided to center around schools and universities because I thought they would be the most interested in the book. The book describes your mind using the same principles as physics yes, so that you can view your thoughts, emotions, sensations, and perceptions as objectively as you would view your phone, stars, or even your laptop. Lastly, before beginning the journey, every adventurer needs a good co-commander like Lewis needed Clark. And so I enlisted one of my best friends, Matt, to join me on this adventure. And just like that, we were off. What's up world? We are here in Michigan, Boston, Massachusetts, Chicago, North Dakota, Columbus, Ohio. We are here in the great state of Colorado, home of Motown, deep dish pizza, not Mount Rushmore, that's in South Dakota, and the Celtics, go Sixers. And let's go sit, let's go down and sit. Uh, and let's go sit, shall we? To kick off the tour, I hosted a book release gala with all my friends and family at the National Liberty Museum in Philadelphia. I got to share more about what an idea space is and one of my favorite quotes. There's a good quote by Munin Jirji, if you want to understand your mind, sit down and observe it. I even got to show off the short film I made. And voila, the macro idea space. I also released a baller custom painting I had made by the great Cameron By. The painting hosts all the things that make me happy in life. Heck, there's even a painting of the painting inside the painting. Painting section. And if you look really closely, you'll even find Waldo. I'll put a link down below if you want to explore the painting some more. After the kickoff, it was time to get to work. Before the idea of sitting in public, the first thought was to talk to people in the streets about the idea space. What comes to mind when you hear the word idea space? Um, brainstorming? Uh, I don't know, I think, I think I'm brainstorming maybe. Mindfulness? As a short overview, an idea space is a physics-based model for the mind, and it's the first practical solution to Einstein's field equation in 60 years. If you ever feel like you can't be alone with your thoughts, but have been hesitant about meditation due to its woo-woo culture, <laughs> then the idea space offers a scientific framework to navigate your mind's complexities. Your idea space consists of your thoughts, emotions, sensations, perceptions, and the empty set. These are the elements of consciousness, and then consciousness is like shining a light onto your idea space. Your idea space is also unique to you, uncountable, and has zero measure, which our topics will hit on later. Other than a few kind souls, not that many people wanted to talk to us. So we moved on to the rest of the Northeast, sending emails and contacting schools, thinking of other ways to promote the book. Then, while struggling in New York City, the idea hit me. Let's just sit in the middle of Times Square. And just like that, the sitting was born. Meditating Across America underscores the reason behind writing the book, to promote an objective, scientific understanding of the mind to foster happier lives. But how does meditation and mindfulness intersect with physics? Well, let's take a look. As we've explored, the two main properties of an idea space are that it is uncountable and possesses zero measure. Uncountability is synonymous with impermanence or constant change. Consider the universe. It's always changing. You're on Earth spinning at approximately 1,000 miles per hour, which in turn orbits the sun at roughly 66,000 miles per hour, all while our solar system whirls within the Orion arm of the Milky Way at around 515,000 miles per hour. 
It's no surprise then that your idea space is also impermanent or uncountable. This means that no two thoughts are identical and the person you were five years ago is not the person you are today. Zero measure means your idea space looks like nothing. For instance, hold something in your hand like your phone. Clearly, you can feel it, you can see it, others can see it. Now, close your eyes and bring to mind a mental image of your phone. Do you see an image in your mind? Yes. Can anyone else see that image? No. That's because your idea space has zero measure, so it looks like nothing. In turn, the idea space creates a new branch of science, the science of the first person. On one hand, everything we know from physics, chemistry, and biology falls under the science of objects, the science of things we can measure. On the other hand, we cannot use rulers, sensors, and timers to measure an idea space because it has zero measure. So we need a new tool, which is where mindfulness comes in. Remembering the wise words of Munindra Ji, If you want to understand your mind, sit down and observe it. An idea space combines the humanities with the exact sciences, which may seem a little radical at first glance. But like Einstein said, If at first the idea is not absurd, then there is no hope for it. Today, mindfulness is often shrouded in woo-woo culture. <coughs> but the whole point of sitting in public and writing the idea space is to pierce through this mystique by using the same rigor of objectivity and falsifiability found in the science of objects and applying those principles to the science of the first person or applying those principles to the mind. This fusion, this new frontier of understanding transforms mindfulness from a mystical concept to a powerful scientific tool. The idea space is not just about inner peace. It's about revolutionizing our experience of happiness, equipping us with the ability to differentiate objective realities from imagined realities, and ultimately reshaping the way we interact with the world and with ourselves. The trip wasn't all work, no play. I got to meet some of my idols in physics and mindfulness, and I even got to talk to a few universities. We stopped by a few other colleges and saw some of the world's best stadiums. As a basketball junkie, you already know we had to stop by the Hall of Fame to talk to Ernie and the crew. All right, big fella, what was Magic Johnson's number? 32, off to a flying start. We even stumbled upon Mall of America in Minneapolis which had a Nickelodeon themed roller coaster and a fully built Legoland. We then headed west to watch some footy in Seattle, the city of the 12th man, and got to see a delightful sight. Next, we headed to LA where we not only saw the rare sight of snow on Venice Beach, but also caught a legendary performance of All Star by Smash Mouth. But, of course, the best part of the tour was definitely using it as an excuse to travel across the beauty that is the United States. Halfway through the trip in the luscious state of Oregon, we adopted a cactus named Planty to join us on a ride of a lifetime. But even with three living creatures and one chat GPT, Matt and I got pretty bored along these car rides, so we perfected something called the reverse Cali Dap and one. 
A Kali dap is simply a slap plus dap. So the reverse Kali dap and one starts with a dap. Then you hit the and one on your chest and finish with the backhand slap. Putting it all together, you get a little something like this. On the way back, you already know we had to stop in Vegas, which is one of the coolest places on earth. Even if you're not about the Vegas life, you have to appreciate the vibes of the place and the magnificence of it all, including the sphere, one of the first modern wonders of the world. I mean, we stayed in a castle. King in the castle, king in the castle. And it's in this castle that we ate our 300th peanut butter and jelly sandwich. A staple of our nutritious diet has been peanut butter and jelly. So let's make some peanut butter and jelly. It's peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. To celebrate this monumental feat, we got all-you-can-eat sushi. The final stop on the tour was Nashville, where we experienced Broadway in true fashion, immersing ourselves in its legendary honky-tonks. The trip was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. At the end of the day, it was an excuse to travel coast-to-coast -coast across the US with a specific purpose in mind. Not many people get to travel across the United States, let alone with a great friend who was always there to pick you up every single time without fail. Okay, maybe we failed once, but it was still fun. We started filming in one location and ended up publicly sitting in over 50 locations, which is a great way to promote a scientific understanding of our mind. Along the way, we were able to see our friends, the sunset conjecture beauty, with friends, give lectures, hand out books, and most importantly, live life. Tell me about the idea space, sir. We're here in Mall of America. I'm taken by a roller coaster, so this is great. And I want to tell you about stuff in the idea space. The idea space is a mental model for your mind, and even kids can understand it. Just like adults can go on kid roller coasters. And it's see. <laughs> I'll post more videos soon explaining the concept of an idea space in more detail with the goal to make an idea space as real and as useful as gravity. So make sure to subscribe to get the latest updates. Thank you everyone for the support and I'll catch you next time. Is it recording? <laughs>